Thank you, Chair. Um, if you were a statewide candidate in Michigan in this last election, with everything that you believe about election fraud, and you are on the losing end, much like, um, say, uh, President Trump or candidate John James, would you have requested a recount? I've got doubts with the integrity of the recount process, so I probably would not have done that. And, and by the way, just to put this in context, back in 2016, when President Trump did win Michigan explicitly, and Jill Stein ordered a recount, I was just as adamant about pursuing election integrity in the wake of that. I had one of my staffers that was out in Detroit, same place where we identified a lot of other problems right now, and she was there present when they came up and identified a poll book that said 306 votes were cast, but there's only 50 ballots inside of it. So I've been concerned about this from uh, even when uh, our top of the ticket guy is the victor. So you would not seek a recount, even though you believe there is fraud. You would seek remedy through the courts to just throw out votes and tally what was left? Is that your approach? What I believe should be done, which was not done by the State Board of Canvassers and Wayne County Board of Canvassers, is a detailed forensic audit, um, because that's what, a, that's what a canvas is. It's an internal audit, essentially, is what it comes down to. And I wanted them to perform, and I still would like a performance of a detailed forensic audit. And as we identified, I mean, we talk about Antrim County. This isn't just a Wayne County issue. We don't know how many other counties uh, this may have impacted that that flew under the radar. It didn't have a Bill Bailey highlighting what was going on. Um, so um, I believe you need a full forensic audit. I, I have, I, I, the key question is they haven't dememonstrated chain of custody on any, of the, on any of the key election data. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm concerned. You can't just go off and fix it with a recount of the ballot. That's downstream. If you've already got this whole chain of custody broken by the, at the uh, qualified voter file level and at the poll book level, what good's a recount gonna do? Well, uh, I, I think that it's pretty telling that the Trump campaign did not request a recount in Michigan. It seems pretty clear to me that they know that a recount would um, mess up their current strategy, which is just to throw up a bunch of smoke and mirrors. And it's particularly telling also that you here, sir, in committee, you have continued to repeat information about Antrim County, and then when you were corrected with the testimony that this committee heard, you just go back and repeat the same old misconstrued statements about what happened in Antrim County. So forgive me if it's difficult after reading these lawsuits and listening to your testimony to, to, to understand even what you're talking about. We need some evidence, we need some proof. All we've got here are conjecture and musings by former Senator Colbeck. All right, well, I'll tell you, um, uh, Upstream, we talk about the recount issue in particular. You want to talk about some of the upstream concerns that have never been refuted. We got 8.1 million registered voters here in the state of Michigan. Uh, the only problem with that is demographic analysis shows that more than 300,000 and as high as 600,000 of those folks should not be on the voter rolls. So you want to go off and do a recount, you've already got a broken link right up at the top that says there's over 300,000 people that should not even be eligible to vote in the state of Michigan you've got some serious problems when you even, the Antrim County and everything downstream of it, frankly, is, is uh, interesting side notes once you realize that somebody's broke, uh, breached the top link of the chain of custody. So how can you be confident in anything downstream?